Now, a look at life in the fast lane of the information superhighway. Surf the internet with Wingham Rowan and Anna Damsky at the Cyber Cafe. Coming out on the internet, he couldn't tell his family or friends, but Michael finally told the world that he was gay. A new generation of games on the net. The Big Breakfast's Jason Bradbury raves about his favourite shoot-em-ups. Plus, the government is in league with aliens and hiding the details from us. That's what David and his group on the net insist. Welcome to the late night TV programme that loves the internet. This is Cyber Cafe. I'm Wingham Rowan. Here's our expert with the killer keyboard. Anna, are you ready for this week's quest around the net? Indeed I am. Right, where's the challenge? Ooh, lamp shots. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, what does it say? This was set oh, by the team here. <laughs> Find the most bizarre live camera feeds on the net. It's dead. OK, we ought to explain, yeah, uh, uh, live camera feeds. A lot of people take a camera, put the output of it on the net, and it's what they point it at that's funny, isn't it? Yeah. All right, you know where to start? Well, there's apparently just some toilet cams, so All right, I'm going to well, start with those. OK, good luck. We'll catch up with you later on. Now, some net speak for beginners. M-O-T-O-S means members of the opposite sex. M-O-T-S-S -S means members of the same sex. If you're looking for a partner on the net, it's important to know the difference. Michael, you're 30, you work in computing. Tell me about the time you realised that you were gay before you discovered the net. How was life for you then? Well, it was pretty awful. I, I felt as if I was the only gay person that I knew. Uh, nobody else knew that I was gay. And, and really, my only contact with a, a wider gay world was the occasional surreptitious copy of Gay Times. I got off the top shelf of the newsagent and took out, wrapped in another magazine. Um, so, really, I didn't have much contact, nothing to ground myself in and think it's okay to be gay. I was very confused. And you discovered a internet uh, channel called MOTSS, Members of the Same Sex. That's Where right. did you go from there? Well, that really started building up my confidence because I discovered a list where there were people like me, people with the same kind of background, same kind of education, um, same kind of problems that they'd obviously gone through and now now seem pretty happy and, and pretty open about being gay. And did you just go straight into the discussion group and leave messages all over the place or did you Not take your time away. before actually saying who you were and saying something about yourself? I, it took a little time, a, a, a while of reading and, and finding out who was there and, and working out for myself that it seemed like a friendly place and, and that if I did post a message then it wouldn't have dreadful consequences. Um, so yeah, a little, little while of building up my confidence first just by reading. And what sort of messages did you start putting in the discussion groups when you did pluck up your courage? Well, the first one was, was pretty low-key, I think, really just saying, I'm here and um, I've been reading a bit and uh, announcing my presence. Um, but even doing that for me, it was, 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 was quite a big step. Um, and, and it felt afterwards, when, when the message came back and I saw that it was really there, quite, quite liberating to have actually made a, a public statement. So you got much more confident through talking to people in the members of the same sex group. Yeah. What did you do then? How did you translate that into the real world? Um, roughly at the same time, I, I decided with the confidence that I'd got from, from the um, discussion group to make my first step to, to go to a social group and, and meet people um, for real as well as on the net. Um, and so, again, it was similar, heart, heart pounding in my throat as, as I went along to the pub for the first time. Um, but getting over the initial barrier and, and actually meeting somebody, um, people, um, it was great, yeah. All right, well, the members of the same sex discussion group is something of a legend in the uh, British internet world. Jeremy's in that group now. Jess, what sort of things are happening right now? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, as a matter of fact. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, people looking for friends, roommates, um, just discussing general issues surrounding homosexuality. I found something, this message referring to gaydar. Uh, what, is, what is gaydar? It's, it's really a sort of sixth sense for, for feeling that somebody else might be gay, just, just from... Um, you just know. Signs. Yeah, it's not, not any one thing, just, just, just the dress and, and manner and things that right. kind of add up and make you think, perhaps this person is gay. It's pretty interesting. And they've got, um, you know, there's, there's stuff about... There's, there's a few flames. There's one here. 
the flame is someone it's, it's sending a critical, a critical messages. Critical message. What it's, is entitled, it it's entitled Kill Pufters. And what does he have and to say? It just says, meet in front of the old state house for a damn good kicking. Uh, so, yeah, it's, I well, wonder, very, very witty, I think. Very witty indeed. I wonder if anyone will go along to that. <laughs> I shouldn't think so. And if, he, if that does, he'll want to get the kicking I expect as well. Well, uh, members of the same sex, uh, the discussion group, is only part of what the uh, internet offers gays in Britain. There's also something called Digital Diversity, which is a much more glossy set of internet pages. And MOTSS and Digital Diversity were both set up by Nigel Whitfield. So you're kind of Mr. Gay Internet UK, really. <laughs> well, uh, yes, uh, I've been you, accused of it. Do you come across a lot of people like Michael? Yes, I, I do. I'm, UK MOTS has been running now for... Uh, MOTS means M-O-T-S-S. -S. yeah. It's been running for six years, and in that time there have been a tremendous number of people who've come along. Students, especially, they get to university, they get access to the internet for the first time, and they can suddenly fire off a message and contact other gay people, especially if they've lived outside a big city. That's not been possible for them before. And now, as the internet itself becomes more widespread, you find people, who, before they even get to university, we've had people in the sixth form saying, I'm the only person at school who's gay. What can I do? Should I come out to my classmates? Should I tell my teachers? What advice do you give them? It depends tremendously on the circumstances. I'm, in this case, someone was coming up to his mock A levels and he was going on to university in about eight months. And we said, well, if you feel you absolutely have to, come out but if you're not sure of the reaction you've got eight months and maybe it's better to get through your exams get to university and you can be completely yourself at university without risking getting a bad reaction from people at such an important time so what advice you give people is always going to depend on their circumstances but generally be out Welcome, bienvenue, and welcome to another bite-sized excursion around the internet with me and him. Dan will shortly be bringing you news of a top bell-ringing page, whereas I have been expanding my vocabulary. Words are great, aren't they? I use them all the time, and if, like me, you enjoy impressing ladies with your long words, you really should visit... Words are us. So, what's it all about? Well, in their own words... Welcome to Words Are Us, the fun way to supercharge your vocabulary. Now, OK, it all sounds a bit twee, but bear with me, the basic idea is a good one. Every day, a new word is presented based on a weekly theme with its definition, pronunciation and usage. If your computer supports sound, you can even listen to this pronunciation, albeit with an American accent. The site holds an archive of previously featured words and has a free mailing list for those who wish to subscribe. It's a simple idea, simply presented and well worth a look. Ah, campanology. The gentle art of bell ringing. No global network of computers can truly be regarded as complete without it. Which is why I strongly recommend a visit to the... Bell Ringing Picture Gallery. Answering a clearly needed demand on the internet, this bloke, Mr Matthew J Sorrell, has put together a definitive internet site devoted to the ancient and noble art of bell ringing. As you stroll through this virtual gallery, you can witness sites such as this. And this. And why not hang around with the Bells and Bell Ringers in North America? If this isn't enough to really get you in the mood for some hot rope tugging action, there are sound files to enjoy, like St. Martin in the Fields. And that old classic Westminster Abbey. Yes, this is one site that's truly a load of old bells. If you discover wrongdoing in the company that you work for and you do something about it, you tell the papers, you could get into big trouble, you could even be sacked. Uh, Mike Walsh here runs a website that will maybe help you out if you're in that position. Tell us a bit about it. Well, if you fill in our form on the site, bang off your information to us. There's no way we can tell who you are or anybody can trace who we are. We are. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing for the last nine, ten months is advertising our service which is run by maybe uh, six people, um, including two or three journalists like me, uh, with lawyer friends, who then advise anybody who gets in contact with us what to do about their information. We've made it foolproof in the sense that nobody can find out who the providers of the information are. And um, if they want to be identified to us, they can be. And if they want us to take action, we can, and we have taken action. We've got various stories into the press. We've got we've helped people on, on an individual basis. So that, that's the plan. So if somebody um, watching watching now has got 
a story, perhaps, or they know that their company is doing something wrong. What do you suggest they do? Well, I suggest they get to us. Of course I do, because we'd like to hear about it. And as journalists, we'd like to, to develop it. But uh, I suggest that they get advice from lawyers or friends. But if they're worried, get to us. Uh, there aren't many organizations like us. There is, there's none like us. There are some others who do help whistleblowers, but I don't think that they have the sort of built-in protections that we have, and we keep on improving them. Sure. But uh, whether it works in the end, I don't know. And you always protect the confidentiality. Of oh, absolutely. Yeah. One of the great principles of journalism, you'd rather go to jail than uh, reveal your source. Anna's in search of unlikely things that have cameras pointed at them with the output on the net. What have you got there? Halfway point? Yeah, well, I haven't found the toilet cam yet, but I did find a picture of Berlin at the uh, Bahnhofzall, which is one of the stations oh, there. Oh, but the camera's not in the toilet. No, it isn't. Um, uh, you're in search of others? I'm in search of others. There's also uh, Golden Gate Bridge I'm going to have a look for as well. All right, more net cam fun after the break. Financial institutions said it couldn't be done, but DFS are doing it. Extended until Sunday, 5 p.m., you can choose anything at DFS, and it's yours free for 18 months. That's right. You take four years' interest-free credit and pay nothing for the first 18 months. For example, this settee is just 599 with no deposit, four years' free credit, and nothing to pay for 18 months. It ends Sunday, 5 p.m., at Crittles Corner, Sitcup. At Shannon Corner, New Malden. And at Valley Park, Croydon. You know why I always have Tic Tac with me? Simple. Because one tiny Tic Tac refreshes my breath for two hours, and Tic Tac has only two calories. So I can have two hours of Tic Tac freshness in just two calories. Great, huh? Tic Tac. Two hours of freshness in just two calories. When you get acid indigestion or heartburn, Rennie works fast. Fast, effective Rennie for on-the-spot relief. Hello again. Does anyone still trust politicians? There's one group on the net who certainly don't. They say governments around the world know of the existence of alien life forms on other planets and they're keeping it secret from us. They're called the UK UFO Network. They're run by Dave. Tell us about your site. I actually run a, a UFO Ezon electronic magazine which has been going there for about 14 months. We've currently got about 820 subscribers who subscribe to the free magazine. We collect uh, various information from uh, newspapers, magazines, TV articles, and of course what people send in to us by email. And we type it up into a, a readable format, and we send it out to the subscribers uh, every week. Uh, our main research is done through the internet, um, from the reports we receive from people who obviously take a great interest in the UFO phenomena because of the amount of actual email we get sent us. What encouraged you to actually get onto the internet and do this? I mean, why? Yeah. I've been interested in the phenomena, I mean, since I was a teenager. Uh -huh. um, and then other things took over, girlfriends and, and uh, work and everything, you know. So it went by the by. Then about um, November 94, when I first came onto the internet, I was amazed at just how much information to do with the UFO phenomena was, was out there. Did you actively go looking for it? Did you just stumble across it? And... Stumbled across it, stumbled across it, and was stuck there, stuck there. So what sort of material do you get? Is... We, um, if I was to say that uh, the information out there is, is information overload, I mean, there is just so much information, you, you just can't possibly read it all. You really have to, to flick through it and try and pick out the, the relevant bits that well, you feel are important. Well, let's flick through it and uh, pick out some relevant bits, eh? <laughs> I've got here some of the printouts of your, your easing that you send around, that you've been sending me for quite a few weeks. I've been enormous spot on it right here. Now, um, the first one I've got here is that there's a man who claims to be an expert in UFO, says that a music video of a popular singer um, perhaps has a, a UFO in the background of one of the shots. I mean, what's, what's the story behind that? Well, I've not actually seen the, uh, the musical shot itself, but there is no doubt there are numerous film reports out there where UFOs or unidentified flying objects hasn't got necessarily got to be controlled by uh, you know, an intelligence, have actually been caught in the background of news reports. Right. And uh, unbeknownst to the people making it. Exactly. So we could actually have one kind of out there right now. Yeah, Possibly, <laughs> yes. I'd be very surprised, but you never know. OK, moving on a bit. Now, this is quite an interesting one. Um, uh, a police officer driving his, uh, driving his motor vehicle saw a bright white light, which he thought was a motorcycle headlamp travelling across a bridge. And of course, when he gets there, there's no bridge. But what, 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 what causes these things? Well, the thought of that is that that could possibly ball, be ball lightning. Um, 
the M50 where the sighting took place is really close to Tewkesbury. Uh, we also received a report to say that a, a local factory in Tewkesbury, someone had witnessed a white light hit the wall of a factory. We put two and two together and thought it was possibly the same incident. However, it transpires that two days before the officer saw this white wall of light, some uh, witnesses in Shooksbury working inside a small printing firm actually saw, during the day I believe this was, saw a white wall of light come through their window, yeah. raise up to the ceiling and start to follow the girders of the building around. Right. But we suspect yeah. that that's probably ball lightning, right. another unknown phenomenon. Right, sure. But, so, out of all the, 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 the sightings that happen, how many are easily explained? The vast, vast majority. I mean, you're talking 80 to 90%, I would The other 10%? What Who can them? say? Who can say? But what, but what do you believe? These unexplained ten percent. Are we getting visitations? Do you believe that? I believe we are. I believe we are. Um, technology over the last fifty years has, has just gambled on and on and on. And who knows what's going to happen over the next fifty or so years? We are soon, sooner rather than not, going to be leaving this earth and going into space and visiting other places. And I'm sure if uh, if I was out there looking down on us, I want to make sure that I keep a very close eye on what we're actually up to. Have you ever seen a UFO? Unfortunately, no, I haven't. Oh, that must be di very disappointing for you. It is indeed, yes. Yeah. Have you ever got sky watching, just in case? We are doing it. I've organised our first sky watch for this August. We're spending a weekend in Cannock Chase, another hotspot area, yeah. uh, where we are going to spend two nights hopefully looking out and who knows. Do you think this could just be a bit of a fad? Because I mean, there's the X-File factor, you know, suddenly everyone's like, oh yes, paranormal things, all very groovy. Don't, could this just die off in a few years' time? Will there be something else to replace our interest? I doubt it very much. I mean, yeah, the X-Files have certainly brought a, a massive interest in, in not just the UFO subject, but a lot of other uh, paranormal subjects as well. Now, I, my personal feeling is, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but within the next 10 to 20 years, I think, my personal feeling is that something's going to happen. Either the government are going to come clean and tell us what they know, or who knows? But as a police officer, unfortunately, you'll have to protect that secret as well, so a bit of a dichotomy there, I who feel. Who can say? Who can say? You never know. We might get a UFO land on the, uh, on the lawn of the White House. Welcome again to another of me and Dan's sojourns around the internet. Dan's been doing something with lonely goat herds, while I've been checking out illegal smoked herbs. Cannabis, ganja, weed, blow, call it what you like, but in the UK it's a Class B controlled drug. One group seeking reforms of UK cannabis law has hit the net with... The UK Cannabis Information World Wide Web site. This is an extremely serious resource that clearly sets out the arguments of the pro-legalisation lobby. It is not some bunch of stoned hippies giving advice on how to roll a 13-skin spliff. This site contains information on cannabis and... UK law, history, medicinal uses, industrial uses. Among other things. And if you really can't keep off the grass and the boys in blue feel your collar... Know your rights on arrest! Legalisation of cannabis is a controversial subject, but whether you are pro or anti, do have a look at this site. As Paul Flynn MP has said, it is... A treasure trove of information. Nice one, Paul. Yes. In my quest for kitsch crap on the net, i found a site as truly awesome as the Alpine setting that has inspired it. Mesdames et Messieurs. Grazie and welcome to the Swiss shop. My life is complete as the virtual Swiss shop has allowed me unlimited access to buy the cream of Swiss craftsmanship, such as... Original Swiss pipes, handmade. Like this rather gorgeous Schwitzer. Oh. And hold on to your lederhosen as those Swiss hipsters tempt you with... Crazy! The new trend! Swiss ethno belts! And while you relax in your groovy ethno belt, why not order some... Traditional Swiss folk music CDs! I've already placed an order for the CD of Ringing Cowbells, which the site describes as madly beautiful, and without which... One would only hear the breathing of cows and the weird sound of the grass. Sadly, there are no sound files of this uniquely Swiss phenomenon. How do you make that 13-skin split? Well, you start... Here's Jason Bradbury from The Big Breakfast. Show us your breakfast! He's here to tell us... He's here to tell us about his favourite <laughs> games Carry on. Carry on. on the net. We'll have to do that again. Hang on, wait. Show Show you. You're, you're quite a net enthusiast, aren't you? I hate it. How did you get started on the net? What, what is it? What, had, you, what are you talking... Oh, I love the net. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I just want to say, it's really important to me to take this opportunity and say, if you've not sampled the net, get out there and sample it, because it really is fantastic. Yeah, how did you discover William? it? Um, I, uh, I used to do a show, a cable show, uh -huh. and it was so cheaply done, not unlike this program, yeah. that, we ha that everything revolved, everything revolved around um, 
a computer. And that included our access to the community, which, which was email. And that's basically how I got it started. I'm all out of breath now. That, that opening really well, was very exciting, wasn't it? Well, we um, asked you to show us the best games on the net. Yeah. The first one you took us to was called Doom and Quake. Yeah. What do you like about this one? OK, well, ob obviously, the, the reason that I want to mention this is because if you, if you even are interested in games, let alone play a lot of them, um, you would have heard of Doom. Um, maybe you've got Quake, maybe you haven't. If you haven't, why? Quite frankly, why? Uh, Quake is the biggest game in the world ever. Sold more units than anything. Um, and the great thing about it is you can get a version of it free, a shareware version. Quake is an amazing game because not only is it fab to play, you can, you can network it over the internet and play against a number, uh, a number of other players, like maybe eight players all playing Quake over the internet, which is an amazing idea. Looking Glass Technologies, what's okay. so great about this one? Okay, Looking Glass Technologies are um, my personal favourite game publishers. They're a group of um, spods, basically. Uh, one's, what are they? They're, they're like uh, potatoes, but it's like it. No, they're, they're, they're people that are really into um, computers and spend all their time doing it and really can't communicate. A little bit like me, in a strange way. Um, but most of them have got more hair than me. Um, and th they created a fabulous line of software, the best game of all being um, Flight Unlimited. And that's a flight sim. Now, I'm a bit of a closet flight sim fan. I actually fly aeroplanes um, as well, which is cool. Let's admit it. Um, and I like playing them on computers. It's fun. It gets me to practice and I, you know, I don't die um, and stuff like that. And also the sickness doesn't come. Um, Looking Glass Technologies. They, they make the best flight simulator available, Flight Unlimited. And uh, it's also a very well-written site. The good thing about this is, is that it demonstrates that lots of games have game-specific sites, and that's the great thing about the net, that if you're, if you're into anything, be it card games or, you know, Doom or Quake or whatever, you can usually find a site absolutely dedicated to it. And Looking Glass Technologies is a particularly good one because they, they give you um, the opportunity to become a beta tester for them, which means that any new software they're working on, they send you automatically down the line. And, you, you know, the actual game, and you can play it and give them comments on it, it's got all kinds of patches. Just explain what patches are. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I briefly said earlier, but mm -hmm. I maybe should have made it a little bit clearer. Um, patch is very, very simply something you put on your trousers when they're slightly worn. It's also, uh, in the PC world, a little bit of software that enables you to clear up any problems that you've got with the game. And it's normally the games companies that, that release it. I mean, I sort of said that earlier, but uh, any problems, send for the fact sheet. <laughs> William. Vir I love you. Virgin, it's Winger, by the way. Virgin Interactive. Ed Edwina. Wingham. Virgin oh. Interactive? What do you like about them? Your name's Wingham? Yeah. What kind of name is that? <laughs> Don't ask me, I wasn't consulted about what, it. Weren't you? Yeah. See, I was. Anyway, this, Isn't is, that this is not material. <laughs> Virgin <laughs> Interactive, on. why do you like that site? Um, I, I, I didn't really want to advertise a big company, right? Like Virgin Interactive. I got your name wrong, is that fantastic? You can't edit that bit out either, because I said it about four times. Um, Virgin, right? It's beautifully put together, it's easy to access, and you get free stuff on it. Kitty Hawk software? What's okay. that about? Oh, brilliant. Um, games, quite a, you know, I sort of stretch the uh, genre, if you like. Uh, Juste orange et genre. Um, Thanks, yes. Jason. Thank you for that. Quick um, advert there for orange juice companies. Um, Kitty Hawk software? Kitty Hawk. Um, paper planes. OK. Paper planes. It sounds ridiculous. I did a search one day for paper planes, actually, because I was working on a science show called uh, Mad Science, which is on, in LWT in Granada. It's a sort of kiddie science show. And I wanted to show the, uh, the viewers how to make a really cool paper plane. So I did a search on the internet. I couldn't believe what I came up with. Um, Kitty Hawk Software basically make paper-oriented software. CD-ROMs that they use um, uh, to teach people how to do origami and make really cool things out of paper. But one of them is paper planes. And you can actually download a, a whole working version of this with you know, not, like, music and graphics. And it shows you in, in like, video format how to fold paper and make the coolest paper planes you've ever seen. And again, I like this site because it's free. They're giving you something for nothing. What's next okay. for uh, games on the net? What are you waiting for? Um, just look out, because the titles that are coming out now, all of them are going to have to be networkable in some way, i.e. they're going to have to connect a number of players up together. And those players don't have to be in the same room. They can be on the other side of the world, which is an amazing idea. Anna's been searching around the live camera feeds on the internet in the last 25 minutes. End of the show. Top three. This is number three. This is number three. It's a nudist beach in uh, Amsterdam. But they're miles away. <laughs> yeah, well, they're miles away. Go to number two. No. Um, this one's Sydney. It's a, a sky view of Sydney. You can see the Opera House and the Sydney it's, Harbour Bridge it's there. It's black. Well, it's night time. There isn't really a camera there, is no, there? No, it's night time there. Look. Well, come on. They'd have a few lights. Number one. <laughs> 
And number one, the well, amazing fish cam. Somebody's actually got a, um, a camera pointed at their fish tank. Which and they're transmitting it to the world. Yep. That's deeply fascinating. That well done. Thanks. <laughs> Send us an email via our net site if you should be on this show. Music in Helter Skelter.